TGR News, broadcasting from the State of Israel. Welcome back to TGR News. Hello, hello. Well, two things. Number one, I made it back from the Army. Uh, that's uh, one of the reasons why this uh, TGR uh, news episode is probably just a couple hours late from my usual deadline. Uh, but I made it back in time. And we got Ola with us. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I have to participate. Yeah, right? so I got to be on my best behavior today. Yes. The, um, another thing is, is we don't have the uh, reel of us passing out food this week. Because if you remember last week, we did a double dose because I was in the Army this week. So... Next week, we'll have to do another double dose because the week after next week, uh, uh, this coming week after next week, uh, I'll be in the Army again for a week. So, uh, and I still cannot do it. I still can't. Yeah, she, Ola still can't pass out the food because of a broken leg. But she's doing better. Yes, much better. Thank you so much for all your prayers and uh, all your comments and taking care of thinking about and thinking about me. Um, it was um, really... Um, how you say? Heartwarming. Heartwarming. Yeah, yeah. With Thank your, you, guys. With your Israeli accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look like we're the same colors today. I tried. Oh, we matching. Right? Okay, well, let's get into it. There's a lot happened this week, as I usually say. Yeah. This week, the head of the Mossad, uh, Dadi uh, uh, Bar Barnea, uh, stated in a press conference about Iran's nuclear program that it's uh, that it is clear that there is no civil reason for weapons grade uranium. They have three uranium enrichment sites and thousands of uh, centrifuges, only to make nuclear weapons. It's I mean it's clear even though they keep saying it's for uh, for you know they, they for their civil reasons for the electricity or whatever. Oh come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, enriched uranium is is only for weapons. Of course, yeah. Uh, and this is it, the world needs to wake up and really understand this is a this is a big deal. This is really serious. It really is. But let's go on. We'll get into more into details into that. Um, the Arab uh, the Arab terrorists in the country seem to change their tactics every once in a while. They just sometimes you know they get, they kind of get into one thing and then they and then they start doing something different. Now it looks like they are starting uh, a new tactic. This week, an Arab in a black Toyota stopped in front of a and blocked the way uh, to, of a bus. It was a driver of a bus and got out of his car and started shooting at yes. the bus driver and the bus itself and everyone in it. And so this is also, this, like I said, every once in a while it seems like they change their tactics. This seems like a new one. Just driving down the highway, they decide they find someone they want to kill. They just stop the car in front of them and come out shooting. And this, this kind of tactics, it's hard to fight with. Yeah. Because it, it's not like you have organization and they write, you know, uh, yeah. have, they have some things running in their social medias and stuff. No, this is just a kind of random people. They're not random. Yeah. They, of course, they have their... Yeah, single, a, a single person that just, you know, a radical with his radical uh, terrorist uh, beliefs. And all of a sudden, they're sitting at home and says, today, I'm just going to go and do it. So yeah. just having, like you say, having uh, intelligence and everything doesn't help. You can't have intelligence of what inside people's thoughts. Yeah. You know, intelligence officers can't get that good. <laughs> Not, maybe technology is headed that they're way. They're pretty good at that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Israeli Air Force pilots, after a large, uh, a large long-range uh, um, uh, bombing exercise, stated that they are ready for any targets that are needed to take away the Iranian nuclear threat. It was on the TV after they did a big, uh, a big uh, uh, exercise. I thought it was nice how they did that, did that uh, where they talked to the pilots. Of course, they blacked out their faces and oh, changed yeah. their voices and yeah, everything yeah, else. Yeah. But it was nice to hear him say, you know, we're ready. You know, we were ready for it. Yeah. Uh, the commanding officer of the Israeli Air Force, uh, Amikam uh, Nolkin, um, have said that the Air Force is working on ways that, with new technology to take out the nuclear plants and weapons in Iran. But even though he can take out, take out those uh, targets for, from Iran, the knowledge and the ambition that Iran has to, uh, to, to make nuclear weapons, that he can never take away from them. Yeah. Which I thought was a very smart thing that he added that into it, because it's true. Iran's working hard and hard and hard to getting uh, nuclear weapons. And, uh, and Israel and the rest, hopefully the rest of the world kicks in, well, can stop the weapons, can blow the weapons up, can blow their plants up. But what you can't take away from them is their knowledge of how to do it. Yeah. And their ambition to get it done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's yeah. 
And <clears throat> in a northern Arab town, uh, Ulm Fahim, uh, the Arab criminal element set fire to six private homes on Saturday night. I mean, this, this, crim this Arab criminal element is really getting out of control. People yeah. are, uh, are getting where they're afraid to leave their houses, you know. It's terrifying, yeah. And it's something that built up in, in uh, years. Yeah. You know, we just, we neglected it. I think we neglected it. We Absolutely. didn't take care of it in the early stages. And now and we're now yeah, absolutely. Goes back to us. Yeah, pe people are afraid to get out of the houses and everything else, but it, it seems like the police is not able to just get control of the situation. It, the, there's reasons why, because the police have their hands tied. Because yeah. Israel politicians are always so scared that we might look like we're being too rough on the Arabs, since the criminal element in this country is Arab mainly, especially the violent crimes with guns. Arab. It's yeah. all Arabs. Yeah. Uh, then they're just they're just scared to do anything. It seems like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the middle of the afternoon, a young Arab a of the age of 25 tried to stab any Jew he could find outside the Damascus Gate. He found one. It was a religious guy in Jerusalem, right there outside of the Damascus Gate. The security officers were able to stop him before anyone was seriously hurt. The guy that they found, he was stabbed. They did stab him. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then the Arabs in the in Jerusalem were very upset that the terror that uh, the terrorist that was trying to kill him, to kill the Jew was was shot by the security forces. Oh. Which what was are you supposed to do with somebody who coming with a knife? If you see uh, there's a um, video that goes around in social media, and you can you can tell yeah. he was running with a knife yep. all around <laughs> and threatening two uh, soldiers that yep. just shot him. And they took, uh, they investigated, am I right? Yeah, they, well, well the, the security uh, officers were uh, even un un investigated to check that their, everything was on the up and up with the way they took care of the situation, which is, it sounds good, but it's this horrible situation that, 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 uh, that the, the security agents, the military, the police, uh, they're, they're scared to pull the trigger when they need to pull the trigger because they know now the country is going to come against them and put them in investigation on them. And, and if they can find anything that might have been wrong, you know, it's easy to look at an, an event like that when all the adrenaline's running later when you have no adrenaline running and you have hours to look at a two second clip exactly. to analyze every thought process. Yeah. So it's it's really bad. It really really is bad. Yeah, but the the, the case closed eventually, yeah, which is good. It's, which is good. It's supposed to be that way. It's sh that's it's good. It sound everything sounds good, but the problem is that the case was open. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, last two weeks was full of terror acts. This is not the only uh, right. two that we mentioned. Uh, stabbing and shooting was performed mostly by minors, yeah. young age, young 14, age, 16. Uh, one of them was four years old, just a teacher. 40? Uh, 40, yeah, the 40 teacher was uh, who was teaching in uh, Jerusalem, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Uh, um, last, uh, the last one, last terror act was performed by a 14 years old girl. Yeah. She stabbed the mother of five. Uh, in front of her kids yeah. on the street and they live next to each other in uh, Sheikh Jarrah uh, yeah. area and uh, the, we saw the women uh, Sheikh Jarrah area is in Jerusalem by the way it's a very yeah. very uh, hot area you can tell yeah. they're fighting but uh, she was fi the, the, the woman of the um, the mother she felt secure she saw the girl the girl looked at her she saw it's Arab girl but she felt secure because it's a, you know young girl 14 yeah. years old yeah, she absolutely. was with her backpack from the school so she stabbed her and the mother told that my son told me mom you have a knife on you in your back in your back yeah, yeah. it was uh, his uh, home you know yeah. and the girl was um ran to the school and hide there but uh, we uh, we arrested her eventually yeah yeah that was i think the sixth or the seventh attack in the last two weeks yeah 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 Yep. Well, on Saturday night, there was an explosion in uh, Natanz in Iran, one of Iran's nuclear facilities. There has been no information about what exactly happened at initial, initially. Well, the Iranians say their forces testing the area for some reason. Um, it didn't sound like they know what they're talking about. They sound all confused, so I don't think it really, they know, you know, they, they tested something. Yeah, it was weird what they said. Yeah, they said it was like they were testing the area for something for, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, this, yeah. This, this sounded very off. It, it, it was something going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Israel didn't take any responsibility Yeah, Israel didn't take anyway. any responsibility for it. So. I don't think it was Israel, actually. Never know. We never know. Yeah. Never know. <laughs> well, Daddy Barnea, 
the head of the Mossad in his interview that we just talked about earlier stated that the Iran will not be uh, allowed to be a nuclear power. Now that's a pretty strong statement for for one man to stand up and say that on his watch I'm going to take care of this problem. Yeah. Well, I hope he's right, but I mean uh, it seemed a pretty rough, pretty pretty strong talk to me. This is the first time that yeah. somebody says in my watch it won't going to happen. Yeah. So this is a big yeah. thing. Well, Herzog, the president of Israel, uh, in the same interview, said that America has to be more aggressive, stronger, uh, in their stance against, against uh, Iran. Iran. And 100%. And I'll tell you what, time and time again, every time I hear uh, President Herzog, he's the new president, I think he's been for a couple months now, I'm getting to where I like him more and more. I think, he, I think he, he's a straight shooter. I think he has the right ideas and ideals. And um, yeah, I think it, I think I think we did pretty good with this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the latest wave of terrorist attacks continued uh, when another attack at the checkpoint of south of uh, Tulkarem. Tulkarem is about 50 miles north of uh, Jerusalem in Judea and Samaria. Uh, the, the terrorist uh, drove his car, sped up and drove his car right into uh, the security uh, agent there, uh, who was at the, or the guard who was at the check post, um, r running right straight into the, into the booth, that the, the little guard booth that they have there. Yeah. The, uh, the guard was seriously injured, yeah. but uh, it looks like he's probably going to live. In an Arab school during the third grade class time, I mean, this is talking about third graders, right? In an Arab school, uh, Israel had uh, put hidden cameras and stuff to, uh, to, to figure out the truth of what's being taught. Because I don't know if you remember, but it's one of the uh, American uh, uh, contingencies with, uh, with the Palestinians to not, um, to not be pushing this uh, anti-Jew talk and, and teaching and terrorist yeah support teaching in their schools to be able to continue to get their uh, support from America. So Israel's really on to it, right? And we know and they never have stopped. They never even slow down. Yeah. And, uh, and they found an intensive, they found with these cameras and stuff that they had intensive hate uh, toward Israel and Jews, as well as terror supporting materials where they're just teaching the kids, third graders, fourth graders, even second graders probably have started. But, um, it really is something bad that, that just has to stop. And America needs to realize that they wrote in, a, in their deal that if they wouldn't continue giving money and everything to the Palestinians unless they stop. And until that kind of stuff doesn't stop, we definitely don't have no chance of a future. No, of course not. Yeah. This is the children we're raising, the next, few, you know, next generation. We're our kids, we're teaching them um, uh, shalom, which peace yeah. and love and, and respect each other. They teach them how to stab us so we have more injuries, how to kill us, how to hate us, that we took their land, that we are, uh, yeah, uh, you know. Absolutely. So how, and it's a brainwashed kid. Yeah, and they, yeah exactly. And they even teach them as, at school how, how to stab to get the most yeah. uh, pain or the highest yeah, yeah. chances of killing. What would have to wake up? It's how, how people are so blind and don't understand and don't see. Absolutely. Uh, on Monday night at 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, there was an airstrike in Syria on their seaport. It was such an exact, it was, it was an amazing airstrike, actually. If you look at it uh, logistically, <laughs> it, was, it was something to... Something well, to he's my soldier. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the strike was inside of the part of the seaport where all the containers are. And I'm, like you, we all know, we, we've seen ports many a times. It's containers, stack on containers, beside containers. It's very congested, right? Well, there was a few containers inside all those, that whole seaport that had uh, weapons from Iran that were once again being shipped to uh, Hezbollah to help arm them, to help attack us. Yeah. And, the, and Israel was able to make an airstrike and hit and only hit those few containers with those weapons. I mean, that's that's amazing. It is. It yeah. is. Well, it was. Uh, it really was something. Uh, but go back to what we were talking about earlier with the police and everything with their hands tied. The police have a new problem now, with the large numbers of police officers actually quitting. Oh they're, yeah. Yeah, they're actually that's quitting. Well, I can understand them because on one side, the 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 people of Israel were all mad and upset with them because they don't do their job. Their job yeah. But on the other hand, the country, like we talked about in this uh, video here, in this, um, in this news, the uh, TGR News thing right now, the country ties their hands because they're so scared to become politically incorrect because they're too rough on the Arabs or something, right? Yeah. yeah. So, the, so, so the cops are getting yelled at by the people 
and then they're for not doing their jobs and they feel like they're not doing their jobs and then the country won't let them do their job they yeah. won't give them the power to do their job exactly yeah it's really it's really a situation that needs to bennett needs to wake up and really to do something yeah and quick and fast and and strong uh, yeah they took the, the authority from the from the police yes and, absolutely um, you can tell that and now with the arabs the situation is really out of control yeah in the negev it is, uh, it's not only in the Negev, but also it's in the Negev, in the Sheva. Negev. When I was in the army back in uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> You're giving away your age. Oh, yeah, it was back then. So I even back then, I remember I was in Beersheba, which is in the Negev. They were driving crazy, the, the Bedouin, the Arabs there, and police was uh, kind of trying to force the, the issue, but it wasn't really... Uh, Obey, how you say, obeyed, uh, yeah. it wasn't really, uh, and now it's just, it's people afraid to drive there because they have rocks throwing on them, people afraid to walk, women afraid to walk on the street yeah. because they sexually abused and uh, stuff like this, and the police, they have, they're powerless. Yeah. Well, yeah, like you said, it's because they took away their authority, the, the government took away the, go the police's authority to enforce all of it. Uh, it's it's bad. Well, you have that was about it for this week. You have anything else you want to add? Um, no, I just say that I'm glad to do it with you. This is my first maybe, time. Maybe I you'll hope, come more. I hope I was okay, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, well, we appreciate everything, and don't forget to join us on thegoldenreport.com. Thank you, guys. And until next week, bye bye. Shabbat shalom. Bye.